So won't you sign me up? Sign me up for the Christian Jubilee. Won't you write my name? Write my name on the road. I've been changed. I've been changed since the Lord has lifted me. I want to be ready, ready when Jesus comes. So won't you sign me up? Sign me up for the Good evening. My name is Mark Syme, the minister of the Northfield Church of Christ. Welcome to our evening services for Sunday, July the 21st. We'll sing a few songs, observe the Lord's Supper, and I have a message that I hope will uh, be enlightening to all of us. Here at Northfield, we sing from the songbook, Songs of Faith and Praise. If you have that book, I will give you the number and the name. If you don't, I will give you the number and the name anyway. And maybe you can find it in your own book or Google it so that you can sing along with us. The first song that we will sing this evening is number 156. 156. It's entitled Beautiful. Beautiful. <clears throat> beautiful. 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 Jesus is beautiful, and Jesus makes beautiful things of my life. Carefully touching me, causing my eyes to see that Jesus makes beautiful. Things of my life. Turn to number 116. 116, the title of this song is God Will Make a Way. God Will Make a Way. <clears throat> God will make a way where there seems to be no way. He works in ways we cannot see. He will make a way for me. He will be my guide. Hold me closely to his side. With love and strength for each new day. He will make a way. He will make a way. And before the Lord's Supper, we will sing number 354. 354, I gave my life for thee. We'll sing verses 1, 2, and 3. 1, 2, and 3. I gave my life for thee, my precious blood I shed, that thou might ransom be and quicken from the dead. I gave, I gave my life for thee, what hast thou given for me? I gave, I gave my life for thee. What hast thou given for me? My Father's house of life, my glory circle throne. I left for earthly night for one drink sad and long. I left, I left it all for thee. What thou left aught for me? I left, I left it all for thee. Hast thou left aught for me? 
I suffered much for thee, more than thy tongue can tell. A bitterest agony to rescue thee from hell. I bore and I bore it all for thee. Hast thou born born for me? I bore and I bore it all for thee. What hast thou born for me? We come to the part of our service where we observe the, observe the Lord's Supper. We are commanded to do this on the first day of the week, according to the 20th chapter of the book of Acts in the seventh verse when Paul was preaching to Christians at the city of Troas. This uh, verse, I think, very, very plainly lets us know that on the first day of the week, they gathered together to break bread. This was instituted by Jesus uh, at what we like to refer to as the last supper recorded in our Gospels, where Jesus sat with his disciples. He told them to take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. Drink, this is my blood, which is the new covenant. And so as we gather about the table, let's remember these things. Let's remember that the, the bread is Jesus' body. Uh, it is that body that suffered uh, terrible agony on the cross for each of us. His life-giving blood flowed from his body as he was dying on the cross. And that blood that is told to us over and over again is the blood that washes away our sins. So as we gather about the table, let's remember these important things. As the song said, uh, Jesus gave his life for us, his precious blood he shed. Let's pray for the bread. Dear Heavenly Father, we're grateful that in your divine wisdom and your divine plan that you sent Jesus to us, that in the new covenant, there would no longer be the sacrifice of animals, but Jesus made the one-time sacrifice for each of us by dying on the cross. And so as we remember his body suffering with nails in his hands and his feet, we remember uh, what he suffered and he sacrificed for each of us. Uh, bless us as we partake of this symbol of his body. We pray it in his most holy name. Amen. This is a song that we see, see, from his head, his hands, and his feet, that his blood flowed for us. And so as we take of the fruit of the vine, let's remember that this is what Jesus told his disciples, therefore told us that this blood uh, would be part of the new covenant. It would wash away our sins. And so as we partake, help us to remember that the life ebbed from Jesus's body as he sacrificed himself for us. Let's pray for the fruit of the vine. Our God and Heavenly Father, we're grateful for the uh, time that we have that we can remember Jesus on the cross, that that life-giving blood flowed from his body. Help us to remember its significance as we partake, that our sins through this blood might be forgiven. We ask this in Jesus' most holy name. Amen. With the Lord's Supper being completed, also on the first day of the week, we are commanded to lay by and store that which we have prospered. Uh, we are to be giving in a sacrificial way. We are to be giving in such a way that uh, it is what we have purposed. It is uh, that giving from our hearts, that giving with a cheerfulness, knowing that the monies that we give will further uh, the Lord's work in this kingdom here on earth. So as we give, 
let's remember uh, why and how we ought to give. Let's pray. We just thank you, dear God, for the ability to give. And we thank you for the desire to give. We just pray that the stewards of this money will use it in such a way that your word may be spread to those who haven't heard it. That these these monies would be used to help those who are in need. Bless us as we give, because we know it is one of your commandments. And let us give with an open heart and an open mind. And let us give with joy. We pray this in his most holy name. Amen. The last song that we will sing is number 484. <clears throat> it's entitled, You Are My All and All. And notice the chorus, because that's uh, will segue into my lesson. 484, You Are My All in All. You are my strength when I am weak. You are the treasure that I seek. You are my all in all. Seeking you as a precious jewel. Lord, to give up, I'd be a fool. You are my all in all. Jesus, Lamb of God, worthy is your name. Jesus, Lamb of God, worthy is your name. Taking my sin, my cross, my shame, rising again, I bless your name. You are my all in all. When I fall down, you pick me up. When I am dry, you fill my cup. You are my all in all. Jesus, Lamb of God, worthy is your praising our Lord because he certainly deserves that praise. If you were there this morning, uh, you heard that the lesson this evening would be entitled, Jesus, the Lamb of God. Hence the last song, Jesus, Lamb of God, worthy is your name. Jesus, as the sacrificial Lamb of God, sacrificed, <laughs> I'll say that right, sacrificial Lamb of God, is one of the most common pictures that we have of Jesus. There are two Greek words for lamb as I know it. Amnos is the most common. It's the most common term for the sacrificial lamb. And it only occurs in three passages in our New Testament. First, when John the Baptist saw Jesus, he said, behold, the lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. That's in John chapter 1, verse 29. And the next day, he said, in verse 36, Behold the Lamb of God. 
The second time it appears this way is when Philip was sent by an angel of the Lord to the road that ran between Jerusalem and Gaza, and he found a man riding in a chariot reading from Isaiah. And it says, He was led as a sheep to slaughter, and as a lamb before its shearer is silent. That's what Acts chapter 8, verse 32, where this is recorded for us, says. Third, many years later, Peter wrote this in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 18 and 19. You are not redeemed with perishable things like silver or gold from your futile way of life inherited from your forefathers, but with the precious blood as of a lamb unblemished and spotless, the blood of Christ. Now, there is another word for lamb in our New Testament. It is called arneon. It's another word for lamb, but it's only found in the book of Revelation. Um, with that, let's take a look at what the nature of the lamb is. Because Jesus was referred to as the lamb uh, many, many times in our New Testament, Lambs have always been a part of our culture. Now we've used many adjectives to describe the lambs, but usually in the context in which we use it, it shows innocence. It shows gentleness. It, it shows an animal that's unable to defend itself. Hence we have the shepherds, the shepherds who guard the sheep. And this, of course, fits perfectly into Jesus, who said of himself in Matthew 11, verse 29, Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart. That gentleness and that humility is reflected when we use the term lamb. And the Apostle Paul in 2 Corinthians 10, 1 says, Now I, Paul, myself urge you by the meekness and gentleness of Christ. The lamb is also used as a symbol of dependence. In the 23rd Psalm, which many of us can recite, God is pictured as the shepherd of the sheep. And the psalmist also said, in Psalm 100 and verse 3, Know that the Lord himself is God. It is he who has made us, not we ourselves. But we are his people and the sheep of his pasture. So not only is Jesus referred to as the lamb, but we are the sheep of his pasture. Isaiah described it perhaps in the most beautiful way, that sheep and lambs depend on God. In Isaiah chapter 40 and verse 11, it says, Like a shepherd, he will tend his flock. In his arms, he will gather the lambs, gather them to his bosom. He will gently lead the nursing ewes. What a blessing we have if we are one of his sheep because that means we render ourselves to the Lord and we tell the Lord that we are totally dependent upon him. Uh, and so that is, as Jesus is the lamb, is also perfectly described as Jesus as being the shepherd. And Jesus portrayed himself as that dependent lamb who was totally dependent on God. God was his shepherd. Later, he shows his dependence on God in John chapter 12 and verse 49, where he says, I did not speak on my own initiative, but the Father himself who sent me has given me a commandment as to what to say and what to speak. So the utterances of Jesus were reflections of what the Father told him to say and told him to speak. 
So Jesus is the greatest example that we have in our New Testament that was dependent upon God the Father. Uh, and even when he did not want to obey the Father into death, when he asked if this cup could be passed from him in the 26th chapter of uh, Matthew and the 39th verse, uh, he came to understand and he knew and he was resigned to understand that he was to be the sacrifice. And so with that, he said, your will be done and not my will. Now, the lamb also is very frequently used as a sacrifice in the Old Testament. There was a hardly a Jewish sacrifice in which a lamb was not involved. The very first sacrifice was that sacrifice of Abel. And the text says, Abel, Abel on his part, also bought of the firstlings of the flock. And we take that to mean that he brought the lamb, Genesis chapter 4 and verse 4. And so every morning at 9 o'clock and every afternoon at 3, a lamb was offered as a burnt sacrifice, according to Exodus chapter 29, verses 39 to 41. And in Numbers 28, 1 to 8, uh, that was also done basically for some 1,500 years. A lamb was the trespass offering when a leper was healed in Leviticus chapter 14, verses 10 to 32. The lamb was also connected with that Nazarite vow where people, men would not shave their head. Uh, a lamb was what a woman offered for purification when she gave birth, according to Leviticus chapter 12, verses 6 to 8. And so the lamb was all, always in the Old Testament connected with redemption of the firstborn. The lamb was the burnt offering at the dedication of the altar of the tabernacle. Numbers 7, 15 to 17. And the lamb was also used at the Passover meal. And seven lambs were offered on each day of the seven days of the feast, Leviticus 23, 1 to 2. On and on and on, we see the symbol. First, we look at it symbolically, but literally in Old Testament times, they physically use the lambs as sacrifices. Of course, to the Jews, lambs were the main portion <clears throat> of every sacrifice they offered. And so with that in mind, uh, let's, <clears throat> let's go back uh, to our New Testament and let's go back to the words of the Apostle Paul. In 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7, he says, Christ, our Passover, has also been sacrificed. <clears throat> Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, and so not only the Passover lamb, but other sacrifices of lamb symbolize that Jesus is the lamb offered to God for our sins and the sins of the whole world. John 1, 29 and 1 John 2, 1 to 2. Jesus, by all means and in all ways, is the perfect sacrifice and it is the sacrifice of the lamb it is the sacrifice of one who was meek and gentle it was the sacrifice of jesus christ the son of god and as we just observe the lord's supper the lord's supper had to do with Jesus sacrificing himself for each one of us and how important that is. Just as the sacrifice of lambs was important to the Jews in the Old Testament, to us under the new covenant, Jesus, Lamb of God, 
worthy is your name. Jesus, Lamb of God, worthy is your name. Jesus is the Lamb of God. And he is the innocent Lamb that sacrificed himself for our sins. A one-time sacrifice. In the New Covenant, Jesus explained this to disciples, to the disciples, as he observed the Passover with him on the night in which he was betrayed. He explained it, that the bread would be his body, that the fruit of the vine would be his blood, that he would sacrifice himself for all mankind. And he did this as the perfect and innocent lamb of God. What a wonderful message and a wonderful thing that we can conceive in our minds. Jesus, Lamb of God, worthy is your name. And you know what? Jesus serves as our shepherd, as God served as his shepherd. As Jesus said, the words that come to me are the words of the Father. Our words that we use in our life should be reflected of the words of Jesus. That's why the, that's why the four Gospels were written, to explain the life of Jesus and his teachings to us. And so what we are commanded to do is to become Christ-like in our lives. We are to become his children, his sheep. How do we do that? The Bible is very, very clear. The Bible is clear in the steps to salvation. It says the Holy Spirit-inspired Word of God contains the words of wisdom and the words of salvation. After we hear it and we believe it, then we have to make that powerful statement that we believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And we could take that further and say that Jesus is the Lamb of God. And with that, we put aside the rest of our lives. That's called repentance. And then in finality, we are baptized for the remission of our sins that we may receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. This is God's plan of salvation for each of us. And in that, when we become Christians, we work so hard to become Christ-like in our actions. And so if you're listening this evening and you haven't taken Jesus into your heart and become a child of God, if you haven't obeyed his plan of salvation, we offer you that invitation this evening. If you want to respond and you want to respond immediately, get in touch with one of us and we will be so glad to, to come and, and, and take you uh, to the waters of baptism. Let's close with a prayer. Our God and Heavenly Father, as we reflect upon the message of the evening, help us to understand that Jesus, your son, is truly your lamb. He, he was meek and he, he sacrificed himself for each of us. And with that in mind, help us to understand that we are supposed to have that innocent and, and, uh, sacrificial nature in our lives, the, the gentleness. These are part of the fruit of the Spirit that we find in Galatians chapter 5. Help us to be Christ-like in our lives. Help us to be as the Lamb of God. Help us to be sacrificial in all that we do. Continue to bless us, dear God. We know that only in you we find comfort. And we know that only in your son we find salvation. Continue to be with us and bless us. Continue to comfort us as we put our life into your hands. 
We pray this in Jesus' most holy name. Amen. Please, all of you, be safe, and may God bless you all. So won't you sign me up? Sign me up for the Christian Jubilee. Won't you write my name? Write my name on the road. I've been changed. I've been changed since the Lord has lifted me. I want to be ready, ready when Jesus comes. So won't you sign me up? Sign me up for the Christian Jubilee. Please won't you write my name? Write my name. Put it on.